Hello and welcome once again to Cooking with John Elliston. I'm John Elliston and today I'm going to show you how to make breakfast in bread. Now, before we start here today, I've got a wee bone to pick with Ian McLeary. If he wants to fucking have a go at me and slag my cooking, then he can come down here and I'll stick my fucking fist in his fried egg and fucking lunge it up his gravy hole. If he wants to come down here and slag my cooking, then we've got a fucking challenge acceptance here today at John Ellistone's kitchen house. Let's begin. Now, there's many ingredients that you can use for this particular recipe, but it's just about what kind of character you are that determines the authenticity of the breakfast and bread. Now, today we're going to make just a simple breakfast. Any breakfast you want, but I prefer to have it Ellistone style. Now, before I gather my ingredients, I like to gather up my thoughts and just think, what the fuck is going to happen today? And then we fucking take it from there. So, as always, the first thing you want to do is put the heat up to about 22 centitude. If you put it any higher than that, you just lose that fucking inferno. So, start with the oil, just to get the pan nice and glazed. Wait for that to heat up and then we'll just see what happens. So, what we've got here today is black pudding to start with, but it's augmented black pudding for the vintage uh, orchery around the corner. Uh, and we've got honey glazed sausage melt. Some people tend to just use link sausages, but I go all the way up to the Highlands high and uh, I actually subdue to get them straight for the castle milk uh, fever trolls. Now you just get a lot better, they're just a lot much more glade. And we've got some hash browns after that, but these aren't they like any hash brown you've ever experienced before, because I made them myself because uh, I've got trees, it's potato trees. Now, imagine an order of a perfect soldier marching through the tune. That's the importance that your ingredients have to be brought to the pan. I was brought up in the suburbs, but we still kept cows and horses for the nourishment negligence. You know, if Amy Cleveland wants to come to a challenge, I'm ready. Sausage, black pudding, hash brown, augmentation. You need to make sure that you've got the right chemistry in the pan and all together, otherwise they're just pedantic as fuck. Now, it was very important to get all the ingredients in a small pan, so all the flavours combine together in an amalgamation of pure glade. The smoke that arises from all these different animals into the sky creates the god of Golgorg, who was worshipped by the Thongabees. Now, you may look here and think, that's just an ordinary, traditional English breakfast, but it's no. This exact same breakfast was eaten by the Triceratops King uh, back in 12 BD. Uh, he used to get up every morning and his slaves would go to the sausage tree and just pull the fry up, shake the tree, all the ingredients would fall down, and that tree still exists, and I've left it outside. Now, here we've got four rolls straight from the bakery round the corner, but the thing is, this is an over-the-counter kind of roll. You need to have, you need to experience each other before you can get these kind of rolls. And now it's time to butter the rolls. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, where does John Elliston get his ingredients from? How is all of these ingredients so unique? Well, I don't know. I really don't have a clue. But I've got the best ingredients known to mankind. Now, this might look like an ordinary pot of butter, but this is made for the cows of fucking Castle Caldwell, up in the highlands of uh, the Shetlands. Now, buttering a roll is just as important as the first day that you tied your shoelaces. Accuracy 
precision, determination, and fucking good butter, by the way. Without the perfect role, you're a perfect nobody. And if you're a perfect nobody, then you're not coming to my fucking dinner party. And now it's time to start making up your roles. Now, an interesting fact about breakfast rolls is they didn't ever used to eat them in rolls because rolls weren't invented until the late 19th documentary. What they used to do back in the day was just wrap up the breakfast material into their socks and just soak the flavour and then they'd just throw away everything once it was dry, once they had sucked it or the glade. Now, it's really at this point that just takes me back and, you know, it's very nostalgic to think that my gran used to make this exact role for me when I was just a block. She was a butcher fisherman and she used to fish for cow parts and she would bring back the perfect sausage called and I would eat it and I was only five years old and it made me the man that I am today. If it wasn't for breakfast and bread, I wouldn't be John Ellis. Now, here at this point, you can use any kind of sauce you want. Tomato sauce, brown sauce, mayonnaise, salad fucking queen, or fucking tartar sauce. What I like to use myself is oven baked supreme glade sauce. Now, I grow this in my garden to the uh, clocky trees that I, I planted uh, when I went on around the world. Now, I'm just going to quickly fry up a few eggs here very quickly. Now, one tip for you, if you want to know if you've got the perfect egg, just hold it in your horn. If it boils with the heat of your horn, you've got a fucking good egg, by the way. So you just cut it out like that, fucking separate the egg from the glade. Just keep the yellow nice and cold off. Now, I subtracted these eggs personally through my neighbour's hens. Uh, she bought hens last Christmas because she was feeling a wee bit down. But she didn't really realise that these hens actually came through the pyramids of Algus Clock. Now, there's really only one way to do an egg. If it doesn't have that perfect yellow venticity, then you're just not doing it right. Now I'm just going to put a lid over the eggs just so that they can get that voluptuous venticity. But I'm also going to put a lid on another thing that's been on my mind and that's Ian McLeary trying to come out and have a go at me and treat me that a clown. I fucking accept his cooking challenge any day, anywhere. I'll take his address and I'll fucking go there and show him how the real master of cooking deals with things. We'll just wait and see. When you put a lid on the egg, it just sucks in the right amount of glade to give the eggs that perfect venticity. I'll take Ian McLeod up the town. I'll take Ian McLeod to tap a fucking Mount Elgathor. I'll take him up to fucking swimming pool baths and I'll destroy his cooking episode all over the place. Nobody's going to fucking watch Ian McLeod if I'm in fucking town, right? It really does make you appreciate the food that they ate back in the day. This was eaten in Biblical times by Jesus Christ and his many men before they went out to uh, scrape for traditional Bible stuff. Join me next week where we will no doubt be introduced to Ian McLeod if he accepts my acceptance. Otherwise, if not, join me here in my kitchen and we'll be cooking Pineapple Thunder Bun. If you subscribe to Cooking with John Ellerstone, you can put yourself in for a chance to win a fish slice for your next fish dinner. And I bet you you're not getting anything like that a fame with clearly, are ye? John <laughs> Ellerstone, cause if it's no Ellerstone, then it's no worth a snoggy.